Well, hello again and welcome to Mini Lecture 7. Uh, this lecture is on security and risk management and uh, clearly very important uh, considerations in relation to digital business. So what this lecture does, it looks at security uh, considering digital applications. Uh, it thinks about the mechanisms of security uh, some examples of some data security events and then looks at what a security policy is. And then the second half of the lecture looks at risk and risk is defined. We think about a risk analysis. We think about the global risks and digital risks uh, and these obviously are very relevant to your uh, individual companies you're analysing. This is a quick recap of some of the material from the asynchronous session that is on Wednesday uh, to give you a background to risk and security. So fundamental to all of this is identity uh, and uh, identity is multifaceted. Uh, it's often about self perceptions uh, and there are some scientific measures of identity. Uh, so identity, an individual identity has attributes and measures. Uh, an identity data is used for growth, social good and by organisations for their own purposes. So uh, organisations want to know uh, your identity and a lot more about your identity. And then uh, the data economy is an emerging ecosystem. Uh, and data is uh, an asset or a currency in many ways. And uh, from uh, the session on Wednesday, we, we, we looked at the challenge around trust and that the many definitions are associated with trust and what trust means to individuals. We considered the principles of right and wrong uh, and responsibility and accountability. And we, we sort of looked at the, the concept of this calm pond where digital has started to create a, a number of ripples across what was a calm pond in, uh, in, in, in essentially uh, the um, data pool, uh, you know, a big, big, a big data lake uh, now has been created from from this stone dropping into a little pond and, and create, creating disruption. So there is potential uh, for good and inclusion uh, and there is obviously some privacy regulation and these would be uh, different in most countries. And uh, the some very early research was about communications and about an information source and a destination and the, uh, the transmitter and receiver. So you can see this came from, from the age of, of, of radio signals uh, and uh, being able to use the, the telephone. So a mathematical theory of communication is that there is a signal, signal developed, it's received, uh, and some noise can occur on the signal. So you can see from a, a telephone line, there might be some uh, denigration of the, of the signal. Uh, so this concept of source to destination is, is really what, what we're particularly interested in uh, around security. And so the term security means uh, policies, procedures, um, and uh, and to deal with security threats, uh, and some security threats uh, can uh, can originate from inside an organisation, but they can also be outside the organisation. So here you've got an origin and a destination, and you can see this this alteration scenario. Someone can extract the information, change it as it goes through. And that, that to some extent, is what happens uh, on social media. So some, some person could actually change the source and, uh, and it changes when it gets to the destination. So what, what we do, we, we put up firewalls 
um, to uh, protect organizations and to pro protect individuals. So uh, you've got this, this database. This is very much the old traditional model of databases in an organization. You've got some policy rules. You've then got the, the internet uh, where you, you take communications through and in. And of course, what's happening now is those databases are in the cloud. Uh, so those corporate systems uh, have less, they still have firewalls around them, but essentially a lot of the data is not in the organization now. It's in the cloud being looked after by somebody else who has their own firewalls and access requirements around there. So the, uh, what happens here is the vulnerabilities are caused by an intruder someone who, who gets into this this information source sync flow uh, and the the state of the, the the transfer in the source sync flow so whether it's true or false so you can eavesdrop you can be an imposter you can be an attacker you can alter it, alter things and this is the the basic concept of uh, an intruding third party, and they can do it in a number of ways. There are many, many ways to intrude now with uh, cybersecurity uh, and Trojans and all sorts of worms uh, that you can use in computer data. Here are a few examples. Uh, malicious software can be used. Um, obviously, you can divert uh, uh, divert information as well but here are some examples viruses worms trojan horses injection attacks spyware keyloggers keyloggers are something when they 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 follow what you're typing on a, a keyboard or in fact uh, log what you're doing on on a on a, a smartphone screen so um, there are so many ways of uh, intruding into that data flow so often what, what we see is we, uh, we get identity management software. We talked about that in, uh, we talked about identity uh, in mini lecture 10, um, but there are ways to check the person who, who they say they are. These are basic physical systems here actually, but of course now there is much more verification of digital data. Uh, to verify uh, your digital identity, not only uh, not only email and things like that, but also some of the behavior things, some of you posted, some of your LinkedIn profiles maybe. So there are, are many other ways that, that there are now digital mechanisms as well. Firewalls, we talked about uh, a way of protecting hardware. And then encryption. So uh, you will have heard of, of keys. So where the, the keys are, are really uh, scrambling the message so that when it's being transmitted, it can't be accessed. So uh, WhatsApp put end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, and uh, so those messages cannot be seen by anybody, including people in WhatsApp. Uh, and, and so you've got this uh, protection of data uh, and a security mechanism to do that. Worth thinking about your innovation, uh, and, uh, and if your innovation has uh, encryption of that data, uh, and, and how is the data that critical to encrypt it? Um, what sort of personal information is there? I suspect uh, quite a lot in most cases now. So here are some attacks, uh, just to show they're all recent. Um, student hacked the school system to gain pe competitive advantage in the water gain gun fight. Wow, amazing. Uh, Snapchat hacks lead to a school shooting. Uh, Kent State students hit by credential harvesting. Uh, that's taking stuff about their identity. Uh, Dutch sex worker forum hookers are hacked. Uh, and, and so this information you can see it's just a wide uh, wide range of attacks for all sorts of uh, information potentially looking for identity information about individuals uh, so they can be further attacked but also in, in some cases in relation to organizations uh, 
and it could happen to anyone. So the Labour Party was hacked as well. Uh, and uh, so uh, and so information security uh, and privacy and all of those things do require uh, effective mechanisms to uh, stop hacking, to stop access to data uh, from cyber criminals. Uh, here are the sources of those attacks. So uh, no idea how they put this information together, but you can see the locations. Uh, interestingly, the attack origins, uh, it says here China and the United States and Spain are the highest. The attack targets the United States, Hong Kong and Thailand uh, and the attack types there. So they've got some uh, information so and who 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 the attacks were and uh, what time they occurred so this goes back to um, 2014 you may have read it I suspect not but the university will have an information security policy uh, and uh, here is the web page uh, from the university um, and then there will be a policy document and you can see there is training, uh, there is the, the data protection uh, rules that we talked about in the previous uh, mini lecture uh, and you can see that uh, here from the University of Bristol acceptable use policy um, so you've got all of these policies associated with managing information security um, and uh, you can see how an organization has uh, quite a bit of, of thinking to do around safe protection of data. It's getting uh, uh, some technology is being applied to security. We now have uh, biometrics, heart patterns, DNA, which we talked about in, uh, in identity. We have a cell level analysis, voice recognition. My bank does have voice recognition now, uh, so that's, that's getting more common. Scanning, cloud access security brokers, endpoint detection, machine deep learning techniques, so using deep learning to, to look at identity, uh, behavior analytics, uh, and hardware for hardware authentication especially for the Internet of Things. So you have got uh, new technologies applied to security to, to constantly improve the, the security uh, associated with uh, your information and organizational information and personal and private information. So that's security, a very quick run through of security and security of information as it relates to the uh, digital economy. We now come to risk management. So losing information is a risk. So if you lose information, uh, there's a risk. So you now need to, to, to risk manage the loss. So a security policy is one way of doing that. Uh, risk management identifies the risks. Uh, and uh, we think of risk as uh, uh, a, a sort of uh, an event that might happen that has a, a negative consequence often, but I want to look a little bit deeper than that. Um, so very simply mitigating a risk, uh, you could be wearing a mask, uh, you could avoid activities. So we'll look a little bit more detail about that. So the definition here uh, and again, there's a recurring pattern, lots of definitions, definitions applying context, uh, definitions uh, uh, are also perceptual. So an individual might perceive risk differently uh, to an organization. So uh, here are a few on the left here, loss or injury, um, uh, the degree uh, of probability of a loss, the chance of an investment uh, losing value. So some some basic uh, risk definitions. Uh, there are some from project management here on, on the right hand side of this slide. 
uh, variation in the occurrence of the event, which are positive or negative consequences, uh, risk, ha uh, uncertain event or set of events um, that could stop achievement of objectives. That's a project management uh, methodology. Well, I was a group risk director uh, for a global insurance broker. Uh, and so risk was was our business. Uh, and and from from our perspective and my perspective, I always like to keep things relatively simple. Uh, so here we've got a risk is a process that involves a cause, an event and an impact. And that impact can be positive or negative. So if you think of the current virus situation, uh, many ways the the cause we know the cause we we know the event people are getting sick and we know the impact uh, on on things but of course there are some positive impacts so some organizations if you were making masks have had a very positive impact from uh, an event that is perhaps negative to a lot of people so you can see there are both positives and negatives that arise from risks. Um, and the way we do risk analysis uh, is uh, largely uh, in related to this, this uh, likelihood and impact. This is again, very basic approach to risk management. Um, and uh, so there's a cause, there's an event, and there's an impact and then you can effectively get uh, 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 an extreme event uh, at uh, which is very extreme a lot of impact uh, and with a high probability and so without doing anything uh, effectively uh, that situation could be a really high impact uh, very likely uh, and therefore has significant consequences so, for example, a very weak firewall, a hacker enters and information lost. So something's got to be done about risks that are extreme and probable. And all of the risks have, have to be have some level of management. And this is my process for risk management. Uh, it's one I used when I was a group risk director. And so you you effectively analyze and categorize a risk, you assess those risks, and then you make a decision. Do you accept those risks? Do you reduce, avoid and transfer them or do you mitigate? And I always use the example of going outside uh, uh, and is it going to rain? So you can accept the risk and get wet. Uh, you can reduce, avoid and transfer the risk by not going out. Or you can mitigate by carrying an umbrella with you. So really simple approach to risk. You accept, you reduce or avoid or you mitigate. And then you put some controls around those things. So you, you, you have a control that says, have you got your umbrella before you go out? Uh, and then you can have different types of control. You can preventative control, you can detective control, and you can have responsive control. So responsive control would be to use the umbrella. The detective control would be to, to look at the weather forecast and the preventative control would be, I'm not going out. So you can see here, you, you've effectively got some controls. You can assess and review the controls as well to make sure the controls are effective. And then you go around the cycle again. So you do this risk analysis process. And here is an example from the uh, World Economic Forum uh, of the global risks for 2020. And you can see they've done this, this impact likelihood on the right hand side here. And I, I know you won't be able to read the detail here and we will post the, the, uh, the document uh, on Blackboard. But this is the infectious disease uh, pandemic one, uh, low likelihood, high impact. Okay. Uh, and then the uh, climate action failure high probability, high impact, okay? 
and then you can see the connectivity on the left here of these uh, exact these risks and and uh, the the impact so that so whilst we were looking at my very simple example around an umbrella the interconnectivity of risks uh, gives you this compounding effect uh, of the existing risk and, and that's sort of what what's happening with the the pandemic so one risk but the compounding impact on other things uh, and some of them positive perhaps fewer flights is a positive on the uh, uh, climate climate position the climate uh, and the co2 emissions so here we go a little bit more detail long-term impacts of these things and these are the top 10 uh, infectious disease high impact climate action failure biodiversity loss water crisis so some high impact and then the likelihoods, extreme weather, uh, and uh, essentially you, you've got the, the top 10 uh, impacts and the top 10 likelihoods in, in, in the World Economic Forum document. Here's another way of looking at it. Um, have a look at uh, risks by type or category. Uh, and this is uh, the Aon risk maps. Uh, you should be able to log in and uh, register and get these without any difficulty. Uh, it's a nice interactive map. Here's political risk. Here's legal and regulatory risk. And you can see why these are quite interesting for your thinking around market entry, uh, around the risk and regulatory environment for digital businesses in different countries. Uh, outside Europe because uh, you can see uh, Europe's quite light blue with America but obviously the legal and regular regulatory uh, position in other countries is different uh, so when you move to another part of uh, uh, the world with your digital innovation you've got a different legal and regulatory framework equally the risk of doing business so the, the risks of market entry going into an organize going into a country with your organization with your digital innovation has a risk of doing business so could you lose money uh, could you could you be corrupt could there be security breaches so what's happening to dig digital risks well I think you'll get the picture uh, they're going up uh, and uh, we've talked before about the number of connected devices uh, and uh, we've got uh, industrial devices automotive so because those things are going up the digital risks are going up as well so uh, effectively uh, the security around these things is very very important um, and it's getting more and more of a challenge for uh, digital businesses and particularly security around data because all these devices are producing data uh, Alexa is producing data about the questions that she's being asked by certain individuals in certain locations so you can see how that might be quite useful uh, to fraudsters or um, even very useful to to Amazon to know uh, what their customers are interested in there's health risks with digital. Uh, I thought I'd just mention these because some of you, uh, you know, the, the, the use of technology. So make sure you take breaks from uh, the lectures, the screens, uh, the interactivity on WhatsApp. Uh, so you get re repetitive stress injury. Uh, carpal tunnel syndrome is, is the wrist issue. Uh, computer vision syndrome techno stress uh, you get angry with things because they don't work um, uh, the role of radiation and screen emissions so there are health risks that come out of digital uh, with wearable devices as well uh, there is obviously uh, more electronics close to your body so GDPR aims to protect your data uh, to protect 
uh, to give some level of privacy and security and to manage the risk of that data. So again, the regulatory issues associated with the digital economy, it's not just about GDPR, it's about the wider regulation. Um, but you can see GDPR has got this security, uh, some of the, the ethical principles built in, uh, storage and, and trying to uh, uh, limit uh, use of data where, where feasible, feasible. So to summarize, uh, the digital economy is creating new security risks. Information are assets. Cyber attacks are increasing and continuing, and there are emerging, emerging security mechanisms to help protect and uh, protect identity. And we looked at risk, and risk is defined as a cause, an event, an impact. Uh, and some risks can be positive if they're mitigated as well. Uh, so we looked at risk analysis, very brief look at risk analysis. We looked at what are effectively complex ecosystems for digital, economic, political and social systems. So when you're starting to analyze a country, you're starting to think about some complex ecosystems. Uh, and then digital creates different risks and there are different regulatory mechanisms. So uh, hopefully this uh, little mini lecture was useful to you. It will be quite important for uh, considering uh, the country uh, and the circumstances in the country you choose for your individual assignment. So thank you for listening to this and uh, uh, we'll, we'll catch up on, on Wednesday.